souls. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He's a lily of the valley. In him alone I see all I need to cleanse and make me whole. In sorrow is my comfort. He tells me every care on him to roll. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning stars. He has given me peace in my heart when my soul was burdened. Graciously, he is my prayer, draw me to his side. Now I am living in the fountain, walking in Beloved in Christ. The love of Jesus Christ is not a memory, but a moment by moment action of the ever living Son of eternal God. A widow said of her deceased husband, I will forever love my husband. She remembered her husband's love, which was so sweet and powerful. Jesus died and was raised to life by the power of his Father in heaven. He is at the right hand of the Father, and he is interceding for us. Christ is alive, and he still loves us. Please, enjoy your spiritual nourishment with me on the theme, Nothing Shall Separate Us from the Love of Christ found in Romans chapter 8, from verse 8, 28 to 39. But I will take the reading from verse 35 to 39, and I read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered a ship to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus is at the right hand of God and he is there ruling for us. He is there seeing that his finished work of redemption actually saves us moment by moment and brings us safety to eternal joy. Yes, his love is not a memory. It is an ongoing action of the omnipotent, ever-living Son of God. This is the love which is effective in protecting us from separation from himself. It is a particular love for his people who are called according to his purpose. The love of Christ is sacrificial love. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. It is Christ's love for the church, his bride. Jesus Christ has a love for all. And he has a special saving, preserving love for his bride. You are part of that bride, the church. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Christ, as you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you can confess that you are part of his bride, his church. He's called and chosen one, kept and protected forever 
no matter what. Christ's love is a preserving love. As Christians, we are not exempted from calamities in this life. That is why St. Paul writes, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? One might think that God will not allow these things to happen to his bride. This is not the case. Because every soul that sins shall die. Physical death will happen to all. But it will not separate us from the love of Christ. For even if we are killed in this body, we will live with him forever in our glorified body. Matthiadom is normal to our faith as Christians. St. Paul also refers to Psalm 44 verse 22 saying as it is written for your sake we are being killed all day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered however Jesus is mightily showing us love with omnipotent moment by moment affection that does not always rescue us from calamity, but preserves us for everlasting joy in his presence, even though suffering and death comes. Christians, as we are, we believe wholeheartedly each moment that our destiny rests in the hands of Jesus Christ, whose ultimate love and power we have to be concerned about. It happens that our humanity clouds this truth many times, but we are not forgetting that it keeps everything in perspective because Jesus is our Lord. We do not and cannot know how better to run this world than God himself. Jesus Christ alone is our faith. And it is in him that, that our faith is rooted. In him is our security. Likewise, Jesus Christ is all wise and knows our future. Faith means that we take God at his word. And he loves us so much to give all things for our eternal joy. No matter our circumstances, we should believe that Jesus Christ will bring us to a good result. The reason we should trust and obey him is very encouraging. God has a good purpose in all the hard things that are happening to his people. He could stop them, but... He has a greater plan than you can ever imagine. Neither I nor you knows God's plan for us right now. But we should trust in his promises that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Are you overwhelmed with sadness at what you have lost in this life? Jesus quickly gives you eternal perspective in heaven with him. This life cannot be compared to your future with Jesus Christ. The best you can imagine here on earth is rubbish compared to what awaits you in glory. You should remember that even the very one difficult thing prepares you for another thing. God remains who he is all the time. Any time. All times. In good and bad circumstances. He is all powerful and all loving. He preserves us for joy unspeakable in heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ takes care of you right now in your suffering not 
scriptures later. In your heart and in your need right now, Jesus Christ offers encouragement and resources just for you. He shows you that he is with you. The scripture with the word of comfort and strength that you need to hear. A phone call from the friend when you feel lonely. A help for a task you just can't do alone. Three words. I love you to your spouse, parents, children, friends, colleagues. A ways God's love is truly sufficient to meet any need that you have. Every calamity requires an intervention with practical love. The church is pictured as the hands and feet of Christ. With each person especially gifted, we need to encourage each other and we need to pray for each other as we trust God's power in and goodness through our suffering. We are built firmly for occasion of witness. We are freed from greed to release love for others. The fact that in Jesus Christ, God has offered us eternal life is amazing. Should overwhelm us with joy and gratitude. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, might we not factor you out of our lives, for you died and rose and reigns and intercedes for all who trust in you for eternal life and joy with you in the presence of your Father in heaven. Amen. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. Not to fear, I am found a friend so kind and true, great and mighty in glory. Jesus is the only friend that I know. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning stars. He has given me peace in my heart when my soul was born. Yeah.